Many people have noted that the mainstream media may be omitting certain facts from the public view. We investigated this and discovered that indeed news organizations are often keeping secrets. The mainstream media knows how to get people engaged and keep them that way. Think polarizing stories, ads strategically placed next to tragic events. But there are many secrets they don't want you to find out. Number 10. The Demise of the Fairness Doctrine When Congress passed the Radio Act of 1927, they included the Fairness Doctrine, which said broadcasters had to dedicate some time to controversial issues of public interest and to do so in a fair manner that included opposing views. Over the years, this rule was challenged, and in the 1980s it was revoked. In 2011, it was officially taken off the books, but it had not been enforced in more than a quarter of a century. The lack of fairness doctrine does not necessarily mean broadcasters are free to lie or disperse fake news without the threat of lawsuits. But a broadcaster could spend as much time as they want on a single viewpoint without giving equal time to the other side. Broadcasters are also not required to determine the full spectrum of views on an issue and make a serious effort to choose the people who best represent those views. So a TV or radio station could spend 90% of their time on one side of an issue, then invite someone they know is unqualified to represent the other side in a debate. Not a great system if we want people to give reasonable thought to both sides of an argument. Number 9. Fake news has always existed. Despite what they proclaim, the mainstream media is not immune to spreading fake news and did so long before the advent of social media. They exist to make money and creating or exaggerating existing stories helps them to do this. It could be traced back to yellow journalism when eye-catching headlines trumped researched news stories. For example, in the early 1980s, an employee at Howard University Drug Treatment Program told Washington Post reporter Janet Cook that an eight-year-old was being treated there. Cook told her editor who thought it sounded like front-page news and assigned her to find a kit and write about him. Unfortunately, her efforts to find him did not pan out. Meanwhile, her editor encouraged her to offer the child total anonymity, which gave her the idea to just make up a story, which she did. In fact, she wrote such a moving piece about eight-year-old Jimmy, a precocious little boy with sandy hair, velvety brown eyes, and needle marks on his arms that she ended up winning a Pulitzer Prize. Sadly, the prestigious prize had to be returned after the city's police force called off a search for Jimmy, calling the story a hoax. Post editors then learned of serious discrepancies in Cook's resume. When they grilled Cook, she eventually admitted to fabricating the story. However, not all the blame rests with her. None of her editors demanded any proof the story was real before publishing it. Number 8. Sensationalized and Angry It seems like every day there's another news story that makes me angry. If you feel that way too, it's not an accident. From TV networks to newspapers, every news source now depends on social media to share their stories. But the news media knows people are actually more likely to share stories that make them angry than those warm and buzzy stories about orphan squirrels finding a new home. In fact, one study found the angrier and more enraged someone is about a piece of political news, the more likely they are to share on Facebook. So the media is sure to focus on stories that anger people on both sides of the issue and often on the most polarizing aspects of the story. Because people are also better at remembering and caring about stories, particularly scary ones, like coverage of a terrorist attack than actual statistics, we often end up with an unnecessary level of fear. TV stations and newspapers borrow tricks common in radio making every story either extremely good or bad, and more often they go for bad. Co-Schedule's list of tips on getting people to read your headlines even includes an infographic stating negative superlatives in a headline, performed 30% better than positive ones. Just thinking about being manipulated like that is making me angry right now. Number 7. Native Advertising One of the most controversial issues facing online journalism is native advertising or storytelling ads. Care is taken to make these ads look as much like a real news story as possible. They're typically decked out with a headline, dateline, aligned with a publication's editorial style and tone, 
and offer the same kind of information readers of the publication expect. To avoid scrutiny by the FTC or FCC, publications usually label this as sponsored content, although this label may be in fine print. In 2014, Shape Magazine crossed the line running an article described as news with the headline Waterworks. They cited several studies on the importance of hydration and how bad sugary sodas are for everyone, which fits with the magazine's typical health-conscious style. They encouraged readers to check out Shape's new line of water boosters to enhance the flavor of water, presumably so you'll enjoy drinking it more. The National Advertising Division felt that Shape blurred the line between news and advertising in a way that could confuse the consumer. Although Shape claimed a connection between the product and magazine should be obvious, they eventually swapped the news heading for one that said, by Shape editors, be careful where you get your news from online. Number six, Western tragedies get all the attention. Most people in the Western world recall hearing about the 2015 terrorist attacks in the city of Paris. Not as many people remember hearing about the suicide bombings in Lebanon the day before, or more than 100 college students being killed in Kenya earlier in the year. It's true that Western tragedies often receive more coverage than those in non-Western countries, but is the news media solely to blame? As I mentioned earlier, they're going to focus on what gets the most views. Audiences in Western countries are more concerned with nearby tragedies for several reasons. For one, Paris is a huge tourist destination and many Western news consumers might be interested in visiting there. Not as many people are planning a trip to Lebanon or Kenya, and stories about the safety of a city you might visit are going to get your attention. Viewers also tend to be more concerned about incidents that occur close to home. Hence, local media stations will focus on these stories. However, focusing more on disasters that occur in wealthier countries may lead to more aid going to wealthier countries in the wake of a natural disaster. So how can we make sure to balance this? We should pay attention to news stories we do see from other countries, especially non-Western ones, to let the news media know we're interested in broader perspectives. Number five, meteorologists make all the money. I always thought anchors and reporters were the best paid people at my local news station. After all, I see them the most. However, it turns out the meteorologist is often the highest paid person, probably because weather is one of the biggest reasons people watch local news. This is especially true in small towns where there's very little real local news like crime, accidents, or political views. Bad weather is also extremely good for ratings which is why you may find your favorite show has been preempted for a weather forecaster repeating over and over that it's going to rain a lot or that it's snowing. Good thing they told me since I never would have thought to look out the window. Keep in mind that your weather forecast is only slightly more accurate than flipping a coin. One blogger recently tracked the BBC's forecast and found they were accurate for Cambridge roughly 53% of the time. Another study found that when TV meteorologists in Kansas predicted a 100% chance of rain, there was no rain at all, about a third of the time. I'm predicting none of those forecasters predicted a 30% pay decrease. Number four, nowadays, it's easier than ever to get facts wrong. Sometimes I read an article about climate change or the economy that says experts disagree and think there are an equal number of experts on each side but the reality may be that 99 experts say evidence supports one site while one disagrees. Reporters may also waste time on softball questions instead of real reporting, like asking tough questions of government leaders. Meanwhile, journalists may print facts without checking them leading to errors. One study by the University of Oregon's Journalism School found 2,615 factual errors in 1,220 stories. What's worse, they also found only about 2% of those errors that were ever corrected or retracted. In 2014, the media reported a new law in France that said people could not use work email after 6 o'clock p.m. In reality, it was a labor agreement, not a law that affected only about 250,000 people and required them to disconnect communication devices after a 13-hour workday. 
Another really embarrassing error occurred when CNN inaccurately reported there was an ISIS flag at a gay pride festival. Turns out what the reporter took for ISIS symbols were actually pictures of sex toys. It's a sad day when a major cable news network can't tell the difference between intimate toys and an ISIS flag. Number 3. The FCC Corruption Unlike 83% of Americans, the FCC has a long opposed net neutrality, which they finally voted to repeal in December. The government agency reportedly even used dead people's accounts to post pro-net neutrality, repeal messages, and there's a lengthy Reddit thread where many users have reported their dearly departed relatives' names or accounts, or their own were used in this way. That prompted Pennsylvania Attorney General Josh Shapiro to set up a webpage where people could report these fake shilling comments. Want to know who else supposes net neutrality? Large communication companies like AT&T and Verizon. Coincidentally, the chairman of the FCC, Asha P, is a former Verizon attorney who recently did a Bar Association bitter sketch in which he joked about being a puppet for Verizon. Industry insiders at the dinner might have found it funny, but many who favored net neutrality are not laughing. Number 2. Hypocrisy the mainstream media hopes she won't notice their attempts to capitalize on what's being called YouTube's apocalypse. Earlier this year, after receiving numerous complaints from viewers, YouTube changed its review process when it comes to what content gets ads. After all, ad revenue is shared with YouTubers who get a certain number of views. The Wall Street Journal revealed many viewers flag certain videos as containing hate speech or racist content and complained that ads were automatically placed on these because they got a lot of clicks. Some advertisers pulled their content to prevent it being placed near such videos. YouTube responded by banning advertising on content that contains sensitive or controversial content, including war, political conflict, terrorism, extremism, death, tragedies, or sex abuse. Coincidentally, the Wall Street Journal continues to place ads next to many of these kinds of controversial stories like the Vegas shooting on their own site. Number 1 to 15 billionaires own America's news media. More than 90% of news outlets in the country are owned by 15 billionaires, including Michael Bloomberg, Rupert Murdoch, and even Amazon founder Jeff Bezos. This means big corporations with their own agendas control almost all the news you receive. That's a huge difference from 50 or even 30 years ago when more independently owned stations' net coverage was not always limited to what a handful of billionaires wanted you to see. In 1983, about 50 corporations controlled American media. By 2000, the number had whittled to six. The internet has emerged as a refuge from billionaire or big corporation-controlled media. But to some extent, even that is losing ground as some online sites are being bought by bigger media companies owned by even bigger companies. However, the internet is still one of the few places that some independently produced news could be found. Which facts opens your eyes the most to the sneaky tactics of the mainstream media? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.